All right, guys, so this is our last stop at TRE before we head back home. And I had to stop by here to Mount the Coast and talk to Anna. Anna? Anna? Either one. Anna's fine. Anna. Okay. <laughs> well, you said it with an accent, so I'm going to say Anna. All right, so. Uh, and tell us what's so amazing about this stuff. Yeah, all right. So Mount Coast started um, in April 2024, so we're less than a year, a year old. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, and we've launched with um, three road shoes first, which okay. as a brand that's really dedicated to Ultra, I think a lot of people have been head scratching of like, Where's the trail shoe? Yeah. But we did start in road first, and part of the reason for that, um, this is our hero model, R1, is because we had a lot of athlete insight, athletes all around the world. And road ultras are actually super common across the world. They're just not as common in the US. Right, yeah. So we started in road first, um, and everything about the shoe, it's, been, it's designed by um, some of the best shoe uh, innovation experts in, in the industry. Um, so we, we talked to a bunch of ultra runners and asked them, what do you need in a shoe? Okay. So one of the first things they said is they need space. They need a bit of a wider toe box mm -hmm. and they wanted to be able to control how much room their foot has. Cause as you know, like if you log big miles, mm -hmm. your foot starts to toe swell yeah. and you need that toe splay. So we've got an adjustable lace system here so that, you know, as you continue to run, you can kind of let it out. And your and your feet can breathe a bit more. Okay, so you've got two different, almost two different lacing systems. One at the top, exactly. one at the bottom. Okay, yeah, wow. that's okay. right. Um, and then we've got our midsole here, and this is proprietary to Mount Coast. This is called Light Cell. Um, this shoe, as you know from running, most shoes last around 300 to 500 miles. Yep. Our athletes have been running and testing in these shoes for over 800 miles. Wow. There's not another shoe on the market that's doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And confident enough to say these shoes are going to last you way longer. And at a 160 price point, you're yeah. you're not going to get a better like um, dollar per mile value out of a shoe. Then we also have um, what's called our GoFlow system here. And this is a unique geometry to mount to coast. Okay. So a lot of shoes now, they have um, a pretty intense rocker system. Yep which helps propel you forward and it feels really good. Um, and it's a, it's a lot of front to back. That's the emphasis on your foot movement. GoFlow helps with the lateral movement as well. Okay. Because when you run, it your foot isn't just, and your ankle isn't just going front to back. It's yeah. going laterally as well. Sure. So that GoFlow system helps support that. And then lastly in the R1 to help with this durability is called our Zero Sag. This is an insert in our midsole um, and the material is borrowed from rally cars. Okay. So when you think about rally cars and pistons, you think about shock absorption. Mm -hmm. So this has shock absorption that will keep you cushioned for miles and miles and miles. Okay. Um, so this is our hero model. This is a racing model, mm -hmm. um, which is why it has a dual lacing system. So when you're in a race, you can let it out. Um, then we also launched in our first year the S1, exactly the same, except it doesn't have the dual lacing system. And that's a trainer. Gotcha. And so then, yeah. how do you, so with the foam, like what kind of foam are you, I understand it's proprietary, but yeah. what kind of foam are you able to get that's slight, is it bouncy, is it comfortable, is it springy, it yeah. lasts 800 miles? Yeah, this has got really good energy return. Okay. Um, it is proprietary, but it is a super critical foaming technique. Okay. So, uh, you know, there's a ton of shoes, uh, shoe brands in the market now that are doing super critical foaming. Right, right, right. But right. our designer, um, he's a pioneer of that. He was doing it before anybody else was. So is it like nitrogen infused? It like is what nitrogen it? infused. Okay. Yes, right. that's okay. exactly right. So when you are... What, running right so it's an ultra like mm -hmm. this doesn't look like it's a super high stack like what's the Correct. what's the stack on this um you know i don't know the exact stack on this shoe sorry about that but um i will say the zero sag and this sort of cushioning mm -hmm. I think people think if you have a higher stack, that's more cushion, but yep. that's not correct. Mm -hmm. um, there's different sorts of super critical foam now that yep. you don't need a super high stack height mm -hmm. for the shoe to be cushioned. Yeah. Um, and again, that light cell with this zero sag combined, this this is a really, really plush ride. Gotcha. Yeah. And then do you happen to know the weight at all? I don't know Got the weight off the top okay. of my head, no. Okay. All right. So the training version of this, the only yeah. difference is just the lacing, the lacing system. system. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. And then do you know what kind of upper this is? Jackard. Okay, so it's your card knit? Yep. Okay, nice. All right. Uh, it's a pretty substantial hill counter. I mean, that's a, look at that thing. Mm -hmm. like, and this is like, nice. you know, they say it's a racing shoe for yep. road. Mm -hmm. um, I train in this. And I also, one of our athletes who's an Olympian, um, he runs on gravel as well. Okay. Like, the, and he's logged 1,200 miles on his first pair of R1s. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he's he's got a competitive, very fast racer. Okay. 
So you were telling me that, so this is the first two offerings, and so now yeah. you're actually getting into the trail, trail. side. Yeah, okay, so yeah. So what's the difference between this and say like the trail shoes? So trail shoe is gonna use the same um, midsole, okay. so light sail again, mm -hmm. um, but you're gonna have a pretty aggressive grip yeah. on the shoe. So it's a Vibram system. Okay. You've got the Vibram Mega Grip, which is four millimeter shark tooth um, lugs, mm -hmm. and then you've got Vibram Light Base. Okay. So if you hold it, the shoe's pretty darn lightweight. I bet. Yeah. Especially for an aggressive trail shoe. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. Yeah. That is pretty and good. then this is the Kevlar um, mixed upper. Okay. Now, yeah. I have tried several different shoes that have had the Kevlar lining. Okay, uh, yeah. Or the Kevlar out, out, uh, upper, mm -hmm. right? Hey? Yeah. Um, and it is tough and it's great. But what I found sometimes is a little bit abrasive. Have you okay. had any kind of comments on that at all? I mean, people tested it to see? Yeah, um, um, basically all of our athletes are in the shoe okay. and they've been testing it. Um, no haven't comments. heard that feedback yet. No? Okay. I've also heard feedback on the Kevlar that sometimes you get like a ballooning yes, effect yes, here yes. just because of the material, but haven't seen that yet either. Okay. Um, let me know your thoughts when we're able to get you one and you can test it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's got, yeah, Kevlar upper dual lacing system, which okay. is a bit different than the R1 lacing system. Yeah. Um, this is just going to have quick two draw. cinch. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, same, same um, midsole there in the light cell. Okay. Do you know what these lugs are? They four millimeter. Okay, I was going to say, like Yeah, four and drop is four millimeter as well. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All right. So it's a pretty aggressive um, trail shoe, but at a really lightweight. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, for a trail, trail shoes usually are built up, right? So they're a little heavier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, I mean, in hand, it feels it feels pretty soft. Yeah. Or pretty light, I'm sorry. So yeah, for sure. We've got one other shoe launching in 2025 if you want to go over that one. Sure, why okay. not? Let me grab it really fast. This one feels lighter than this one. Almost. This this is our lightest shoe now. Okay, wow. So this is called H1. This is our hybrid shoe. Okay. So this is road to trail. Like road to trail. Exactly, okay. yeah. And this is our proprietary um, grip system called okay. Versa Grip. Mm -hmm. This is two millimeter. Okay. Um, and this is a, a similar Kevlar mixed upper, um, but I think it's a bit more of a mix in other threads. Mm -hmm. Dual lacing system as well. The really cool thing about the H1 is it's a new midsole. Okay. So this is the first time we're seeing this midsole. It's called Circle Cell. Okay. The reason it's called Circle Cell is because we're hoping that our production and our supply chain will be a more circular model. Um, so it's there's a big focus on sustainability here. Okay. This midsole is made from 100% renewable feedstock. Okay. So as you know, there's a lot of shoes in the game right now trying to find the balance between sustainability and durability. Right. And the problem is you get these shoes that have awesome innovation in terms of sustainability, but they last 100 miles. They won't last very long, right? Right. And so you, you're sacrificing the performance for the sustainability. Okay. And that's not a very fair choice for runners. No. Runners should be able to have sustainability and durability and performance in a shoe. Um, so this is, this midsole again, this uses no fossil fuel materials to make. Okay. So think about like, it's all made from organic matter. Um, think about like banana peels, coffee rinds, fruit rinds in your kitchen. Okay. You throw that out. Yeah. At a certain point, um, BASF, which is the largest chemical, one of the largest chemical manufacturers in the world, we partnered with them. So they take all that material from your kitchen, mm -hmm. um, convert it into what's called BMB EcoFlex. Okay. And then we put it through our very unique super critical homing process to make circle cells. So you're basically running on coffee grounds. Yeah, about. yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> so all the caffeine you needed. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. and you would have to have a very um, sort of specific environment, mm -hmm. but in theory, this is compostable. Wow. Yeah. So then, uh, what's the what's the price point on this one? Uh, 180. 180. Yeah. And 170. 170. So all of our shoes are going to run from 150 to 180. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, that's another thing with Mountain Coast is we're trying to offer runners, especially those ultra runners who move through shoes a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Um, we're trying to keep them at an affordable and accessible price point. And when you look at like 160 for the R1, I mean, you're getting 2X, 3X wear yeah. than another shoe. That's a really good value. Now, do any of these have like rock plates or any kind of like... Uh, uh, rock plate in the trail. In the trail. And yes. what about this one? No. No. Okay. All right. Sweet. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Uh, so coming back to like the surface cell <clears throat> and the sustainability, I feel like a big conversation with sustainability is also how it is an expensive industry to get into sometimes. Yeah. So in that can affect cost, so how have y'all been able to keep the cost of the shoe really affordable for most people with the circle cell? It's a brand ethos at okay. this point. Like we are going, that is the bread and butter of Mountain Coast mm -hmm. is keeping it affordable. Mm -hmm. The actual financials behind that, yeah. I couldn't speak okay. to. <laughs> um, but we are going to keep manufacturing shoes okay. in this way that you're, we're still gonna offer runners that price point, okay. no matter what. I like that. Yeah, that's so nice. that that's our goal. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So, I mean, you're obviously 
big proponent of the line because you work for them. Uh, but what has been some of the words? Like, I mean, what are, I'm sure people have tested these shoes other than just your athletes, right? You've, I've, yeah. you've put them on other people's, like, influencers, people like that. Like, what, what has been some of the things that are people are saying positive about the shoe? Um, one, the longevity, longevity, of course. Okay. But the fact that they're getting energy return yep. well past the point of other shoes. Okay. So, I, again, I think there's a, there's a, there was a big trend for a moment of that big stack height. Mm -hmm. um, and now people are looking at a, a little bit more modest stack heights and they're hoping for the same level of cushion. And I think they're delightfully surprised at something as simplistic as the R1, mm -hmm. supplying them with enough cushion, okay. um, especially in those longer distances. But objectively, I, I have never been with a brand that in their first year, with their first gen models, I'm getting this much positive feedback. Okay. Um, especially on this duality with the uh, lacing system, yeah. the comfort yeah. is. I mean, I can definitely see it definitely the on the, like on the trail shoe, mm -hmm. how that can be super beneficial. Like if you're from going up or going down, yeah. right, going up mountains, hills, what have you, to loosen or tighten up this front portion. Um, I can, I mean, because I have shoes that like I wish I could do that, right? Yeah, As you're yeah. Barreling down a hill or a mountain or whatever, your feet are sliding around, and that is like a recipe for blisters and hot spots, right? Yeah. Be able to just cinch that sucker down pretty quickly. So I can see that. And I see the benefit too, like as your foot, especially if you're doing those 100 milers, 100 k's, yeah. those really long <laughs> yeah. 200 mile races, you're definitely gonna see um, some growth on your foot. Yeah, so I can do you see know that. Um, Matt Johnson? Um, I'm a, I don't know him, but I'm You're aware, aware. yeah, yes, okay. Yeah. So he ran across Texas, recently finished, mm -hmm. and his um, primary shoe was the R1. Really? Yeah, and yeah. he his foot ended up swelling like two oh, sizes. Yeah, yeah, his foot ended up swelling almost two sizes, like larger than um, his normal size. Yeah. And so he ended up circulating in some other shoes. But um, if you read, you know, his reviews, he's like, the R1 is, it was it for him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank cool. you so much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. That was great. Yeah. Uh, good. Cool.